Hi, it's me, your friendly neighborhood semi-humble stroke assaulter. So I just finished up the video, I is for invisible, and I came across an article about the nine things you should never say to someone with a brain injury. The article itself is meant for um, those that are providing support and assistance to those that are recovering from a brain injury, either on an outpatient rehab basis or an inpatient rehab basis. And it's meant for the caregivers and, and support workers like your OTs and your, your uh, speech pathologists and, and your rehab, you know, uh, physiotherapists and whatnot. So the first thing, I'm going to modify this list shortly. I don't know how many numbers it's going to turn out to be because I'm just going to do this free form almost like every other video. You'll notice I don't edit anything, right? Um, it's all spit it out in 15 minutes or less, occasionally longer. Um, trying to learn how to land that plane. So, no, I'm not a pilot. A thing from work. So, first thing, you should never, ever, never, ever, never say, I know exactly how you feel. Mm, no. No, 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 no. No, you don't. No, you can't. You never will. Had a stroke? No, you don't know. Don't tell me exactly how you feel, because how exactly you feel is exactly how I feel. No. I've done a couple videos on this already. I'm going to say no. I'm not going to labor the point. You can go to other videos. Um, yeah. Um, one, you're never going to know exactly how another person feels. You may be able to empathize, put yourself in my shoes to a limited perspective, but unless you've actually had a stroke, you're not going to know. Right? So unless you've had a stroke or brain injury yourself, you're not going to know exactly how I feel or even a, a facsimile therein, right? Number two, things like, hey, you should know my name, remember what my name is. Um, well, if I have memory problems, don't say things that exacerbate or emphasize my problems. Um, for people that have aphasia and they have difficulty with word recall, word selection, or just getting the words out, do not finish their sentences. Let them finish the sentence in and of themselves. Let them get that sentence out. It's important that they finish the thought because what I found where people were trying to play kind of charades with the next word I might say, and 60% of the time they were wrong, right? So try not to say things that would exacerbate or point out a problem they're currently experiencing. The ever popular, hey, you don't have it so bad, I know so and so and they had this. Okay, one, Unless you're talking about they had a stroke, I don't care. Legitimately, at that point, your lips are moving and I just hear gibberish, right? I'll just be frank about that. As soon as you go to compare my situation to somebody else, I will actually walk away from you. Like, you're not listening, so why should I listen to a thing you have to say? So I'm just going to walk away, right? And I really don't care what you think about that. Because as soon as you start to make comparative statements my situation to someone else's situation that proves to me you're not actually listening to what I have to say. So I will just walk away. It's easier than me just like, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening to a thing you said. Yeah, I stopped paying attention. No, it wasn't the stroke. I just didn't feel the need to pay attention. Right? Yes, there will always be someone in a worse situation. Um, on my stroke recovery journey, I've actually encountered a few people that have either had strokes themselves or know a friend or family member. The worst case scenario I have heard of to date, a man in his 30s on a beach in Antarctica had a stroke. Think about it. You're in your 30s. You're on a beautiful beach and you throw a stroke. That's not so bad if it's, you know, in a fairly medically available situation. Now let's make that Antarctica. It's like a six hour plane ride just for the plane to get to Antarctica and then a six hour plane ride away. Um, fun fact, they don't stock TPA in Antarctica. 
So that person will be drastically um, and irrevocably impacted for the rest of their life, right? And the other ones, people that, oh, let me tell you about my situation. No, nah, I get blah, 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 and then, nah, nah. yeah, don't care. Yeah, as soon as you don't want to listen to my ideas and my situations and my concerns and my dilemmas, you're like, well, I had this happen. Again, we were talking about me and my stroke. I, I don't really care about you right now. I'm trying to have a conversation with you about where I'm at, and you suddenly want to talk about you. Again, at that point, I will actively walk away from you. I will like, yeah, I don't. I think this conversation is done. Mm, I'm going to walk away now. I'll do that. Actually have done it. So, let me just see here. Or people that just arbitrarily want to give their opinions. Well, if you ask my opinion, uh, actually, no, I didn't. If I want your opinion, I will actually say to you in direct, specific language, hey, what do you think? I, I, I want to bounce an idea off you. I need your opinion. If I actually trust you enough to ask for your opinion, I will ask you for your opinion. Um, if I don't ask you for your opinion, yeah, you can assume I don't trust what's going to come out of your mouth to begin with. So there is a very limited number of people in my life normally, and even lesser number now after my stroke, who I actually may seek an opinion from. Um, and they already know who pretty much who they are. Um, and you know what? If you just arbitrarily want to give me your opinion, um, I'll just probably walk away. Unless you've either had a stroke or a brain injury or you've got some kind of professional dealings in that regard, your opinion, <sighs> unneeded, unwanted, going to put that out there, right? Um, if I ask you for your opinion, great. Then I'm going to legitimately want your opinion. Hey, I need to know about this. I'm asking for your opinion. What do you think? Right? Um, you know. So. Lastly. The people that will tell me. And I haven't really experienced this so much. Um, you know. Hey, you know. What's going on? You you be able to do this yesterday? Why can't you do it now? Like I don't think you're trying hard enough. Well, a lot of things happen there. Like post stroke fatigue is a good one, right? You you may be suffering through post stroke fatigue. Uh, you may be having post stroke anxiety. You may be having a balance issue. Like there's many reasons why what you physically could do yesterday, right? Um, or cognitively, right? You may not be able to focus the same way. You may be having low-grade headaches. You may be having massive headaches. It may be the ambient light. There, there's so many reasons why what you could physically or mentally or cognitively, emotionally do yesterday is a different benchmark altogether today. And, well, you can't be tired yet. We've only been working for a couple of hours. Again, the same answer as before. There are so many reasons why what you could do today versus yesterday, right, um... There's just so many things, right? And then the last one out of this set, well, you know what? Why do you always think about you? Like, you might want to think about someone else's situation for now. Well, I'm going to be honest. I don't give a flying fuck about someone else's situation. Right? I'm not concerned if you get to the grocery store. I'm not concerned if your child gets potty trained. I'm not concerned, you know, about your dying grandmother. You know, and I don't know anyone that's going through any of these situations. And I'm, you know, if you're potty training your child, I know that's going to be a wonderful thing. But ma fun fact, 99% of all children learn to shit in a pot. It's an eventuality. It's going to happen, right? If you have a dying grandmother, you know what? I've been there. It's it's not a fun time. But you know what? It's, you know, 
a thing, right? And my concerns, and I'm going to say this, I'm selfish, my concerns are me, right? Where my direction is headed, right? Because there are some days my compass is gimbaled and it spins in any direction, right? And I don't know how to read it, um, or even if it's pointing in the right direction, um, you know? So there are many reasons why, you know, I might come off a bit selfish, right? Uh, and my concerns literally are nothing to do with anything but me. There are reasons why I may be less or more tired, less or more mentally encumbered, less or more involved, less or more cognitively available, right? It's because I had a stroke, right? And as flippant as that comes up, oh, I had a stroke, right? Well, it's true, I had a stroke. Um, so there are days where I'm going to have relatively good days, and there are days where I'm going to have relatively eh days. And then there are days that are just shit sandwiches. They're just, it's just a write off, like right off the hop. It's not a good day. But just keep in mind, there are certain things you may not actually know. You should never say to someone who's going through the recovery throes of a stroke, right? So the big one is I didn't ask your opinion. So don't come up to me and tell me, well, if you want my opinion, don't fucking care, right? You know, things like, well, let me tell you about my situation. Again, don't really care. I'm trying to have a conversation about where I'm at and what I think I need, right? Well, if you think you've got it bad, you do. You should talk to Joanne over there. Her mother-in-law's in an iron lung and she lost a leg in a shark attack. Like, no, again, don't care. Joanne might be a really nice lady, but I don't care about her mother-in-law in an iron lung or the fact she was, you know, playing with a shark. You know, don't finish my sentences if I can't finish my sentence. Right? And for the love of fuck, do not tell me exactly how I feel. Because at that point, I will legitimately just walk away. And if you've had a stroke, right, or a brain injury, um, you're going to know how frustrating, how mind-numbing, belittling it feels, you know, uh, when people say or do some of these behaviors. Um, and you know how deflated you can feel when you went from having a relatively productive conversation to someone that, you know, you thought you could trust does one of these things, right? Um, and trust is not like a boomerang, right? As soon as you they throw it and it veers off in another direction, it ain't coming back, right? Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun thing, right? So for those of you that are currently going through your own rehab uh, and recovery journey from your stroke, Please, um, you know, like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you happen to know someone that's currently going through the rehab journeys and recoveries of a stroke, please let them know about the channel. Like, share, subscribe, comment down below, right? And if you happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering, slurred or stuttering speech sorry aphasia kicking in i'm kind of getting tired inappropriate word usage for situation or context inability to stand unaided general body weakness or weakness on one side please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911 something so simple can save a life